All right, let's check out some of these graphs now and then we'll make our own in a second. So my first graph, um, we'll start with sine of x, I have in blue. And then it's gonna be stretched vertically by two, right? It's gonna have a vertical stretch, just like section two, two. So it's just gonna go twice as high. And that'll be sine of two x, just like parabola stretched and our other shape stretched, it gets stretched by two, so it's taller. It has an amplitude of two. Shh, that's my dog. All right, let's check out the next one. Um, we'll have sine x again, again in blue. And then what happens when we put a coefficient on the inside? So what happens with the coefficient on the inside um, is it does the opposite. So rather than stretching, it compresses. So we have a horizontal compression. So it's basically going to, um, it's like you take it and you smash it a little. So you can see it does a cycle faster. So imagine taking that blue one and then like, pressing it together to make it grow faster. So one cycle or the period is two pi over B, which is two pi over two or pi. So it's just happening twice as fast. It completes a cycle within pi. Um, let's look at the others. So let's take cosine X. So cosine X looks like this and we can keep, right, the pattern keeps going. Um, when we take away pi over two, that's a horizontal shift, just like in chapter two. And we're gonna go to the right by pi over two. And you'll just see the graph shift. Right, and it can keep going. The pattern keeps going and going and going. So if you looked at this on Desmos, you just see these waves go on forever. Um, and then what happens in this next one, we have two transformations. So we're gonna take sine. Sine looks like this. And we're gonna stretch it by two. Vertical stretch. So we go up and down farther, right? It stretches, and then we go up one. So rather than going down to negative two, we only go down to negative one. Our center is now at one because it went up one, and then our top is at three. So that's just a combination of transformations. So let's graph a two by scratch and then we'll be done. Yeah, so three cosine. Let's graph cosine first. Cosine goes like this. A period is two pi, one cycle. Pi is in the middle and negative one to one. Uh, so what happens in this one? We have a new period. Shh. Um, it's gonna change how fast a cycle happens. So the period will be two pi over b, two pi over pi over two, that's my coefficient. So the pi's cancel out and we get two over one half, which is four. So basically our number line now goes to four, the horizontal. So one, two, three, four. Rather than counting by pi over twos, we're counting by ones. That's one cycle. And then we have a stretch of three, a vertical stretch. It changes the amplitude to three. And so it looks like the same graph. Ooh. Pretend that's a little smoother, right? Same graph. Um, the only thing that really changed was the number line. So now horizontally we go from zero to four and then vertically we go negative three to three. And then every four, this shape repeats. So hopefully that helped. And then let's do one final graph. So let's sketch regular sine, sorry about that. And then we will worry about all the extra stuff going on. So sine looks like this, sine starts at zero, rather than starting at one. And we're going to shift to the right by pi over four. So 
So rather than starting at zero, we'll start at pi over four. Um, rather than pi over two, pi over two is the middle, um, pi over two plus pi over four would be three pi over four? Yeah, two pi over four plus pi over four. So three pi over four. So that's where it'll go through the center. And then two pi plus pi over four is where it'll end. Because uh, this is two pi. Oops, sorry about that. That was pi in the middle. Pi over two would be this one. My dog is being a little annoying, so I'm not gonna fix that. You'll just have to deal with my small mistake. And also it helps remind you that we all make mistakes. So pi over two pi is where it goes through, which would be five pi over four. And then we'll go up and we will end at two pi plus pi over four, which is nine pi over four. So that's just shifting everything over by pi over four. Um, the amplitude hasn't changed. It's still negative one to one because there's no coefficient. And the last thing is the reflection. So it's just the same graph, but upside down. There we go. And then obviously this pattern just keeps going and going, right? We're only graphing one cycle. But one cycle goes from pi over four to nine pi over four, from being shifted to the right by pi over four, and then it's the same shape but upside down from the reflection. And technically it should go up to one, right? It was just a quick sketch. So I just want us to be comfortable with the general shape of these graphs in small shifts. Um, we're not gonna do like, five shifts in one graph, but we should be able to do one or two shifts in a graph and just be comfortable with the basic shape. So just be familiar with these two basic shapes. Maybe um, put them on flashcards or have like a nice summary sheet, but we just wanna be really familiar that sine starts here versus cosine starts here. Um, knowing the unit circle helps with that. Um, so hopefully this helped. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll see the other trig fun functions in the later sections.